something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Restorations and Repairs. Tonight we're going to be rebuilding this. This is a Solex carburetor. It is most commonly used on Volkswagen air-cooled engines. This is the 34 PICT uh, and it's really similar to all the other carburetors that they made over the years. This just being the final, the best version that they made. Has a few improvements from earlier models. One of the big ones is it does have an automatic choke, which is this part here. So tonight I'm going to rebuild this thing. I am going to film it for you. I've got a second camera right up there. And so uh, I'll show you what goes on inside of these things. But it comes with this nice kit, which has got a lot of gaskets, a lot of pieces. It even came with, uh, it even came with a, a new fuel filter, which is kind of cool. But it's got a new bowl. I mean, this thing is really... Really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling it. Once we get it all the way apart, there's a lot of cleaning that needs to be done. You can see the goo and gunk around here. So we'll get that cleaned up, but I'm not too, you know, I'm not like freaking out over that right now. It's just, it's just stuff that we will take care of along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. I think the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to remove the uh, choke itself here and we'll set that aside. This is not on very tight. It shouldn't be anyway. An automatic choke was kind of a cool invention when it came out. Uh, if you've ever ridden a car that didn't have an automatic choke, you'll know that they're, they're a little ornery at times, really. But um, the automatic choke is just an electric, electrically operated coil that kind of kind of heats up. And as it heats up, there we go. You can see it right there. As it heats up, it loses tension, allowing the choke to open or close as needed. So. And when we put it back together, I'll show you the proper way to do that. We'll set that aside. And you can see already there's gunk, right? Lots of gunk here. So we'll go ahead. Next thing we're going to take off this, which is a little piece here that has a rubber gasket and a spring behind it. And a lot of times if that uh, spring or the rubber has failed, you're going to have all kinds of drivability. It's going to have what's called flat spots. You're going to hit the gas and it's going to bog uh, significantly. There will so be fuel in certain down. parts of this carburetor, so just be advised that, you know, I've got these mats down here to collect that, and just so you're aware of that. And so here's our spring. And here is the gasket that has like a, that right there. And you can see it's, it's not happy. It's not broken, but it's got a lot of corrosion around it, so it probably wouldn't have been too long before that became an issue. And then we'll just leave the rest of that on for right now. But gosh, has it collected some garbage over the years? You can see that right there, just covered in nasty. So that's not that's not helping anything, right? All righty. I'll go ahead and I'm going to remove all of these um, vacuum lines, these little caps that are on unused ports on this, because we're going to be spraying carburetor cleaner and brake cleaner through all this stuff. We don't want any of that to get in the way. Right on this side, yeah, there's another one there. And I might be able to find more caps that are the proper caps instead of, this works. This is, uh, you know, taking a screw, putting it over a piece of vacuum line and that seals off stuff and it does work. So I'm not knocking that. It's just, it's just an interesting way of doing things. It's kind of the, you know, when you're in a, in a situation, that's the way to do it. We'll go ahead and pull this spring off next. partially off anyway. I guess that'll work. Then uh, we're going to take this top piece off and that's one, two, three, four, five, I think. There might, yeah, just five on this particular one here. This is going to expose where most of the gas should be. This goes into what's called the bowl. And again, all this stuff's going to get cleaned up really good. I have a parts washer, but for this job, I prefer to use um, carburetor cleaner and a wire brush. You can see I bought a brand new wire brush here for this job. You can see we're starting to expose pretty important stuff. This plate here 
is our choke. You can see we've removed our electric choke. All right, but we also have these two brass pieces here, and those provide fuel. Those are those are squirters. So we have that. This is our entrance here for where our fuel comes into the car, into the carburetor. So we're going to take that off and clean that up. We're going to wash all this off, and we do have one more thing we have to take off, and that's this right here, which I think is called a power valve. It's been so many years since I actually thought about what these things are named. Um, because people just don't mess with carburetors anymore. You know, the last car sold in the United States with a carburetor was in 1995, and that was the Isuzu pickup truck. 1995 is getting to be a good long time ago, and those were not exactly popular cars. Um, for mass use, you're looking back into the 80s when uh, carburetors were still common on some models. Most European cars, most Japanese cars moved away from that at least for their passenger cars, um, even earlier than that. Let's see if I can get that off. Looks like I may have been glued in. There we go. All right, here's another spring here and another valve here. I'm going to set that aside for right now because it is uh, definitely not wanting to come out of there. But what we're going to pull out next is this. This is our float. And you'll notice that it does have a little pin right here. Don't lose that pin. That's where that sits. And down here at the bottom, you get an indication of just what's going on inside of your car. This is where trash will collect. Rust, dirt, whatever. Anything that the fuel filter didn't catch will live down here. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is somewhere around a 2 or a 1, really. It's not bad at all. And so I'm, I'm happy to see that. That's good news. Our bolt I'm not going to take out because this is the drain for the bowl. If you ever need to get, if you think you got water in your gas or you got trash in your gas, this is a way on the car that you can pull that out and drain out what's ever in here. So that can help sometimes. Right, but I am going to take out this. This is one of the screws that's in here. And it, and it has an adjustment. So I'm going to want to write this down. But one, two three three and a half three and a half screw turns on that so let me go get a piece of paper and I'll write that down so once I've got that written down I can go ahead and back it all the way out now there might be finer adjustments needed once this thing gets put back on but not necessarily so a lot of times if you get it like this you'll be close and close sometimes is good enough or darn near good enough I should say there we go and what we have here is like, as this is where fuel is allowed to go past and then into the jet system. And so we want to clean this up. You can see it's kind of nasty. There's also a small O-ring right there. Really hard to see perhaps, but that's an O-ring. So we'll set that off the side. That'll be something to clean. We're going to take off this. This is our fuel cutoff. I think it's a 14. Might be a, no, it is a 14. There we go. And the kit that I bought comes with a new one. It's a substantially larger new one, but there it is. So that is a solenoid that's operated electronically. It pulls in, pulls out. And here's our replacement. It looks different, but it's, it's it operates the same way. So set those aside for right now. Other areas we're going to be cleaning for sure. Down here on the bottom, there's not a lot going on. We do have a couple more jets that we're going to pull out of here. Um, and those are actually right here, that jet is, and that is our, we're just going to unscrew that. That one's just, that one doesn't have an adjustment, that's just in there. Right? And a jet is an interesting piece of machinery. If you take a look, there's a tiny hole below the screw there, and that is where fuel becomes atomized as it passes through all these small channels. You never want to take something like a pick and clean those out, because you'll actually change the, uh, pattern. They're cone shaped. You just want to clean those out. You can use a wire brush, but you want to clean those out in carburetor cleaner mostly. And uh, and that, my friends, is about as far as we're going to disassemble this. It's now time for me to take this thing over and clean it really good. Really good, because it's nasty. Now we do have these here. I guess I'll take these out just because I've got this thing on the bench. We have these here. I don't know if I have. I think those are 8 mil. Yeah, those are 8 mil, so I'll go get those. Those are two more jets you can clean. And when we're cleaning this thing, 
We're cleaning out the bottom here. We're cleaning all these holes too. Gonna blow through all these holes and watch it wear eye protection because uh, some of these things you'll hit it from the side and it'll squirt right out of the top on you. So you wanna hit all those vacuum ports all of it. So you're not just trying to clean the body of this thing, you're trying to clean the entire thing so that all the passageways are as clean as they were when the unit was made. So I'm going to do that. I'll go get the 8. We'll take that off and then it's time to clean this thing up. I guess I'll unscrew these. Take this bottom gasket off here. It's not too stuck. A lot of times these get re-glued. There we go. And so because of that, they, they'll stick and you have to scrape them off. Luckily, this one came off um, fairly easily. Now, you can re replace. There's a, another half here. If you want to replace that gasket in between, you can. But it, it's not really needed. If it's it, These rarely come apart, and I don't think I've ever recalled one catching a leak between those two spots. So, All right, let me go get the eight, and we'll take those two other pieces off. All right, once everything is cleaned up, it is time to start reassembling. There was one thing I didn't show in camera. I didn't even notice it because it was so covered in muck. But there is another jet there. And this also has an O-ring, so you do want to remove it and clean it and replace that. But yeah, we're ready to start putting it back together again. I'm going to start with this top half here. And it does have this piece. It's a, it's kind of a one-way flow valve. And it does come with a brass washer and a fiber washer. So I'm going to go ahead and get those out of the bag. And there's a lot of cool parts that came in this kit. Uh, stuff that I was surprised to see it usually doesn't show up in these kits. Okay. And it came with a new check valve. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. And it came with new O-rings. These are aluminum instead of brass, but you can see there. So I'll go ahead and place those on there and tighten that back up. And that's when we'll start our little adventure. And that was a 15. the used stuff I just hang on to it I put it off to the side there you know all right there we go right so now we can slide that in there and it makes a little more sense going in as you can see it has this there's this way about it that it's got to go together there it goes and then it'll be able to slide between these two and if you look it's a little hard to see, but there's two small holes, one there and one there, along with the regular holes for the bolts. And we do need to have this in the right location. You just kind of want to hold that together with your thumb while you reinsert your bolts. And once you've got it all started, nothing's going to go flying. But for right now, it actually could go flying. So just be advised, it's not fun. All right. All right. So we'll slide that in. Gate's allowed to open and close all the way. Right. Next up, we can reinstall this. This is our choke. And this is an adjustable piece. So when I put this on, the hook right there needs to be over that pin. But a lot of times you're going to need to make some adjustments and usually that's about as much. I usually start it with that, about a quarter of a turn, give or take. Then I'll put this top piece on and of course if we need to make adjustments later on, oops, that sits like that. I certainly can do that later on. Screwing it down after you've started it and that helps with cross threading because this uh, casing is made out of, I think, aluminum. It might be even be magnesium. So it's kind of a soft metal to start with. So. All right, so as far as adjusting the automatic choke, it's pretty simple. <laughs> if uh, you go to start this thing and it's cold outside and it doesn't want to start, well, then you need to give it a little bit more. <laughs> Is that simple enough for you? You need to twist it a little bit more and then uh, try again, let it cool down for a little while. All right, well, that's the top side pretty much reassembled. So let's set that aside and we will start focusing here on the bottom. 
This surface here is something you want to make sure is clean, and I have cleaned that off pretty good because that's where a gasket's going to go. First small screw, the one that I missed, it lives in this hole right here. But first I got to replace that O-ring. I have these little picks that I've had for years that are perfect for getting these things on and off. What's not perfect for getting these things on and off anymore is my eyesight. There we go. All right, there's the little teeny O-ring and the key. now we can install that. And it was nine turns from the start. So what you do there is you screw it all the way down. All right, there it is, that one's in. All right, let's see what else we got here. We have these two here that we need to reinstall. They did not have gaskets on them. They just bought them out. These are uh, tightened down all the way and they sit here and here and I've cleaned all the ports out as well, so they should be good to go. And these were eights. One of them did not want to clean. Uh, the jet itself is really gunked up, but I got it mostly clean. I hope it's clean enough. There we go. So we've just tightened those down. All right, next we can go ahead and reinstall this. This booster here, this power valve, I think they're called. Next up, we have this large threaded piece, which goes right here, but again, there's an O-ring, so we'll go ahead and remove that O-ring. Actually, I believe this came with a new one, didn't it? No. That should be that O-ring right there. We'll go ahead and reinstall that. And this big one was three and a half turns. So we're, again, we're going to bottom it out. Let me use a bigger screwdriver for that. Right, and then that's half. And there's our three turns on that one. On the bottom here, we have an all-new valve that we're going to install. That's our shutoff valve, and we're going to install a gasket on that as well. I think that gets an O-ring. Uh, bigger than that one. Um, too loose. Let's see. There we go. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and install that down here. This can cause a whopper of a fuel leak if that's not set up right. So make sure you put the um, make sure you install that O-ring or that gasket for that, or else looks like they changed that to a 19. I'll go ahead and hand tight it for now. There we go. All right, on the bottom here, it does have a gasket for it. And that's this one right here. I'm just going to put that on and then put these two on just to remind me where that gasket is for later on when we install it back on the car. Okay. Hey, we're running out of stuff. Here's another valve that we do need to replace. It is this one. Stick that down in there and screw it down until it stops moving, but do not squeeze it. Don't squeeze, right? So just, just tight and that's it. There we go. Now it's time to Add our new float, so our old float, well, it's pretty ugly looking, but we do need the pin from that. There it is right there. I'm going to slide that new pin on to our new float, and then that just gets dropped down in there, and that's, that's, how we, that's how we stop stuff. If you want to know how that works, well, this valve right here. Gas flows in, and then when the float touches it, it seals it off. So that's how we stop fuel from going through places it shouldn't be going. Right on. Well, we are very close to done. Now we have our upper gasket, and there are several different upper gaskets that this kit includes. And I don't know why. I guess it's for the variations, right? So this one, this one is close. <laughs> one, we're going with it. So now we're ready to install our top piece. There it is. And our 
top screws are these four here. Looks like some of them on my kit are missing the washers. We got three with washers and two without. So if you have the washers, use them. If they're missing, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. And like everything, start all of them before tightening any of them all the way down, right? Cool, so they're all started. I'll go ahead and squeeze those down. These get a little extra tension. Right on. So that's it. That was the job. It's not a whole lot to it. Now there is some stuff that I'll be installing once it's back on. Here's my throttle cable uh, connector. Here is one of the springs. Of course, it comes with a new fuel filter, so that's kind of cool. And there's some extra pieces. If you notice, I have a little pile here on my table, plus some extra gaskets and you know stuff like that. That's because these kits come with enough parts to rebuild multiple, multiple engines, multiple things. So if you're looking for, um, you know, maybe a 31 or a 28 or 29 or whatever the other models are, it's been so long since I rebuilt some of the really early 60s stuff. It comes with that included in there, so it's very uh, a good kit. And this costs uh, less than $20 with shipping, so pretty cool. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed and hopefully got some information out of how to rebuild your own carburetor. And if you did, maybe you'll think about liking and subscribing. I'll see you next time. Take care.